Welcome to Taranaki Foodies with Area 41. The tastiest food show on the most FM. Yay! Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Taranaki Foodies with Area 41, the tastiest food show on the most FM. It is us. Um, um, we are talking about food, garden, hospitality and our beautiful Taranaki and about people who are involved in all of the above. And of course, music. We are recording our show live on a Facebook page called Taranaki Foodies with Area 41 and join in if you like to be behind the scenes. We are Alina Williams and Michael Self, local foodies and the most fan broadcasters. The videographers today are Oli Foy and Nathan Griffith. Our guest today is Margaret Christensen from Meringue Magic and her amazing sister Rosie from Vintage Linens and Collectibles. Hello girls. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, um, how about we listen to some music first? Uh, Michael, can you please announce the music? Wow, well, we've got that beautiful thing of meringue, lemon meringue from Poe, and just to set the tone for, for today. While um, our equipment is switching on, we just reminding you that we're in a room some Michael Self. Just let me try to explain. Here we go. No, I've been a good girl, but I hear a good I know there's not a lot of logic in it. But my life's been feeling to me. This is a very nice voice. When you are uh, cooking, when I'm cooking, <laughs> when I'm cooking, actually I'm playing a variety. I just put my um, Apple Music on, and oh. it does a mix of everything that I like. You're so advanced. This is nice. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, uh, it definitely makes you go and sets the mood. And uh, I mean, sometimes I listen to the audio book or something like yes. that. Michael, what sort of music are you listening when you're cooking or baking? Well, it depends on uh, I want something a bit solid, <laughs> a bit of heavy metal sometimes. Yes. You know, deep purple, I'm not really getting into it. And uh, you know, but then I tone down and Joan Baez when the food has got to be done gently, a little bit of Joan and. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it all, all blends into a beautiful mix. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I came across a YouTube channel recently and this guy's cooking different dishes but he's taking hundreds of hours to do it. So <laughs> he'll make lasagna or a cake for example but over the course of hundreds of hours. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> the one yeah. making everything from scratch, including, yeah. including the pot. Well, it sounds like it, yeah. <laughs> There's such a long video though, I haven't really got through the whole thing but it's very relaxing. Yes, yes. Yeah, I've just been doing listening to the classical sort of stuff lately, so while well, like we're cooking the opera. <laughs> opera? Oh lovely. Like and Rose, Rose, what sort of things do you sing? Mainly country. Country music. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. I like rubber. Yeah. Yeah. Something comprehensible. Well, you didn't bring some water for yourself. Do you want a glass of water? I will we'll ask Oli to do that. Oh, would you? Thank you. <laughs> you know, so you'll get it anyway. Because <laughs> actually, taste, uh, taste uh, being a review of the food is, is more harder than a lot of people think. Yes. It is November 6th. Welcome back to Taranaki Foodies with Area 41. It is Alina Williams and Michael Self in the studio of Taranaki Foodies with Area 41 at the Most FM. And we have amazing guests today, Margaret Christiansen from Meringue Magic and her sister Rose from Vintage Linens and Collectibles. Hello again. Hello. Thank you for inviting us. Awesome. So um, Christiansen is a Danish name. And... Uh, uh, it's known, uh, Danish cuisine is known for its tradition and food, biscuits and sweet things. So um, tell us about the ancestry 
of your interest. Is it your maiden name or is it your married name? It's my married name. So your husband is Danish? Yes. Yeah. But he's like short breeds and stuff like this. <laughs> Does he cook? <laughs> no. <laughs> so have you, um, uh, have you visited Denmark? Not yet, no. No, on our bucket list. If it hadn't been for COVID, we probably would be oh, there. Awesome. Yeah. So your maiden surname is Minchin. Yes. Sounds very Chinese. <laughs> is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I've, I've read that Minchin has double origin. One of them is like a, from an, um, Anglo-Saxon period, which means a nun. They're and in, <laughs> in old French, it means slender, slim person. Is it, is it something that your family possessed as a, as a character? No, I don't. I don't believe so. <laughs> <laughs> Rosa, what's your surname? Palmer. Palmer. Oh, yeah. this is very it's English. My yeah, yes. this is very English. Yes. Oh, look, we have so many connections to the ethnic cuisines already, and it's quite interesting. Yes. So, what's your ancestry? I believe that it is Scottish. Okay. And there is a Minchin castle in Scotland, so. Ah, yes. Awesome. So, marine magic and uh, Margaret Minchin, it's almost like alliteration based on letter M. <laughs> Was it subconscious or conscious? No, purely by chance. <laughs> <laughs> purely by chance. Did you start your business when you get retired? Um, no, because I've been retired for. 10 years now, mm -hmm. and I got a little bit sick at the beginning of the year, and I decided I needed to do something other than my gardens, and helping out occasionally in the shed. <laughs> but wow. um, yeah, so I decided that it was time to do something else, and it had been in the back of my mind for quite some time to, to make something like meringues. Mm, okay, awesome. So, um, what did you do before getting retired? Before I retired, I was a service station manager oh, in the Queensland. Mm. Interesting. So, why did you decide on Marines? Is there any particular connection? Um, no, not really. I remember I taught myself to make pavlovas mm -hmm. years ago, and I had tried to make meringues once. And it was over a failure. They were a complete failure. And I always said I would make I would make time to make a good meringue. Is it hard? It's not hard. It's you just have to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> they can be finicky. <laughs> I'll ask this question to Michael because Michael is yes. amazing baker. He has a vast knowledge of English cuisine and things like that. So, Michael, is it hard to create a perfect meringue? I think I think so. I mm -hmm. think so that when I do produce one, I can Skype to the world. Yes, I think that's one of the things. But something that I've picked up on Queensland, you're in New Zealand. You taught yourself to make pavlovas. Where do you believe Pablo originated from? Now, be totally honest. Totally honest. <laughs> I still believe they came from New Zealand. <laughs> My grandmother was making Pablovas and they were mixing them by hand, weren't they, Rose? Right? And they stood there for hours, beating up to the, this big bowl. By hand. By hand. Wow. Yes. So and, what yeah. is the secret of good beating? Because so often, Part of the reason that meringues and pavlovas fail is because people beat them badly. Like the rest of us, we get beaten badly. What does it mean <laughs> badly? Is it, is it meant too vigorously or opposite? Um, I think that they don't beat them long enough for oh, a start. Yeah. So, you know, some people do, it, there's a lot of patience involved. I just put them in the bowl, put my sugar in gradually, yeah, and walk away. Can't store it granulated. We're going to get the secret. <laughs> 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 of course. Of course. Yes. So, um, meringue is a French word, right? Yes. So, uh, does anyone in the studio know the origins of the word meringue, Michael? Well, I, I always, those countries of France and Italy, Switzerland, all come to mind. Yes. You know, and when they, you look at the meringue recipe, it says, Beat until you get peaks. Swiss Alps. So I'm going to say Swiss Alps. Yes. Yay! 
<laughs> my Swiss friends are going to do little Swiss dance. <laughs> we do it for each other. Yeah. Which are beautiful. <laughs> In my like, own way. <laughs> So um, I was checking your socials, and um, you're relatively active. There's lots of kittens. Oh, kittens! Stores, and your um, cover says, "Show me your kitties." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. uh, you have a dog and a cat, and they the, the best friends, right? Yes. Yeah. We have um, we have a border collie and two cats that we got from the SPCA mm. at the start of COVID, and they were just kittens. Oh wow! And they are quite delightful. <laughs> your other fascination is over the particular American cars, which is Dodge, right? Uh, yes. Is it yours or your husband's hobby? Well, it's my husband's hobby because he's an, um, an old panel beater from way back. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he has always loved American cars. Yeah. So we have three. Three cars. So how, how do you go to this Americana? Who drives your three cars? Um, <laughs> at the moment we only put one, one at a time. Mm -hmm. And we try to put one, a different one each year. Oh, but, awesome. But he's rebuilding one at my, uh, a Chevelle at the moment, which should be ready for the next Americana. Because <laughs> Dodge almost disappeared. It was a great car in New Zealand in the 30s, 40s, and then mm -hmm. They almost disappeared, but they've started to come back as new cars again now, too. Is yeah. that um, making your little heart beat with joy? Well, actually, what makes my heart beat with joy is the fact that our Dodge was born in 1954, the same as me. Yeah. <laughs> wow, awesome. So this is like a golden era of Dodge, where Dodge was um, kind of um, targeting the upmarket, uh, luxurious uh, customers and things like that. Later on, it became middle range, slightly above middle range yes. and things like that. So your car is actually still uh, the one from the luxury range. Well, I don't know that it was a luxury. <laughs> <laughs> I think the house was probably middle range. <laughs> well, then well, all cars were luxury. <laughs> right, deep personal question here. Those Dodgers had the most amazing bench seat. Yes. Do you still get cushy cushy on the bench seat? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cushy cushy. Oh my gosh, where did you get this word, Michael? <laughs> so, also checking your socials, I've noticed. Uh, I've noticed that Rose posts quite a lot. I didn't know that she was your sister. I thought she was your best friend. And um, you're living in the same city. You're still socializing. You're supporting each other. How awesome is that? You just yes. two girls. Yes. So how does it feel to have your best friend and sister and a relative and person who understands you read the same books, had the same upbringing? Oh, I think it's great. Mm. It really is great because we were split up for a long time. Oh. Um, because Al and I went to Australia in 1983 and we were going for two years and we were there for 30. So... Um, I never really saw Rose again for probably how many years? Oh, well, I was there 20. I was in Australia 20 years. So it's 10, 10 that we didn't see. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of trips yeah. across the ditch. Who paid? Who, 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 uh, who went to whom? Did you go to New Zealand? Did you go to Australia? I feel so jealous. My sister lives in another country. Yes. I miss her so much. The only thing we could do is talk online, mm -hmm. but it's not exactly the same. It would be nice to go in, in the kitchen and make a good old meringue together. <laughs> yes, yeah. Our, our kids all live either in Australia or one in the States. So, yeah. I know what you mean. Um, the story I read today on your socials is about grey coloured graffiti, grey graffiti, oh, grey mixer. Oh, Tell yes. us the story. My mixer. <laughs> your I, mixer. <laughs> I had always lusted after this particular KitchenAid mixer and it was always oh, coloured your hat, <laughs> your scarf. Um, and it was um, candy apple red. Oh, okay. which was really popular and so I used to go into the shop and they were very expensive back then this is going back quite a few this is probably 20 years now. $800 20 years was like a that, yes. like cover the house yes. in a province somewhere yes, yes, it was. so I used to go and have a look at it you know, on a regular basis and one day I went in and uh, the shop owner said to me Mark, I've got something here for you. I reckon you'll, it's a deal that you wouldn't 
want to miss out on. And apparently some a lady had put it away on lay-by and, and she had paid half basically and she disappeared. She never came back. Oh. So she waited the appropriate amount of time and then she thought, well, she'll, have, she'll sell it. And she thought of me. <laughs> but, Someone lusting for, yes. for an item every day, just going to celebrate. Oh, oh no, my son. I just really did love it. But anyway, she said, there's just one catch. She said it's graphite grey. I said, don't care. I'll have it, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't red, it was grey. No, no. Does it still work? It works perfectly. It's just oh like my god, this is a wonderful yes. story. Yes. Something because we live in a disposable culture, a lot of things we are do. thrown away, cups, cutlery, yes. I don't know, people. Uh, yeah, but uh, something that lasts for twenty years yeah. and still works. Yes. And it has that beautiful enamel body rather than it a plastic does. body and yes. yes. It, no, that... it looks like it car painters come along and polish it for me. <laughs> I know that Michael writes uh, stories uh, and write, uh, writes articles about machinery and things like that. So very often you talk about old piece of machinery or something like that, right Michael? Yes, well I do, you know, and some of that kitchen uh, machinery is absolutely fantastic and I think back to when International who produced tractors and trucks and everything yes. but they also produced a range of home appliances under the brand name Irma Harding yes. and they IH the same initial mm -hmm. and they brought out and if you can get some of that gear it is absolutely tough as and um, yeah. you, know, you run over it in a dodge and, and the dodge will come off second best. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, I think it's a perfect time to listen to our second piece of music, it is Tasting History by Al Stewart. <laughs> Awesome, you're doing so well. Can you imagine you've been talking for 20 minutes? Oh, really? It's not as hard after all, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's all funny stories. It's all something that you know really well. It's about you. <laughs> and, uh, very cool pair of brothers, is she? Right? Are they Dodge brothers, aren't they? Yes, yes, yeah. they certainly were. Weren't as grumpy as Henry Ford. Or... So, shall we let a guys try the meringues and maybe oh, they can yes. pour the wine? Yes. Yeah, that's sticky wine to go with. Is it, is it the brand called Sticky Wine? Or no, it's it, call it Sticky it's Wine. Fruits Tremor. Uh, yeah. And you have these stickies to go with desserts. You know, well, they call it stickies. <laughs> <laughs> it must be some uh, scissors in the office yeah. area. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to tie it that tight. This is that, like being nervous and trying for a radio show. Do you want one there, Gary? No. Yeah. So it's not as chilled as it should be, but it's I'm sure Gary can handle that. <laughs> <laughs> Just driven. Sorry, Nathan, I didn't get an extra glass for you. You, you, mean, you mean Oli? Oli is still under No, um, oh yeah, I was, yeah. Sorry, I was speaking of, uh, yeah. Uh, as the son of Sova. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, it's very sweet to go with the uh, meringues, yeah. We got it. I hope he's not out searching. Can you just pull Matt and say that we know how to open it? Look, it's a little from. There you go, Ollie. You can get one of those shots. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lovely crispy wine. Mm. Cheers. Yeah. You probably need a glass for your wine. Nathan, do you want a glass of wine? Oh, yeah. Bring it to me. That's the life, isn't it? We're on the radio, oh, we're doing no. life, we eat meringues, and uh, yes, <laughs> we're happy. <laughs> There's no, no COVID in Taranaki. <laughs> 
funny when I do my one of my garden shows, we go out and as our crew would always get to taste things and drink wines. And you get back and the poor old guys are in the farming show, all they had been to do is a bet with his cow. Oh, wouldn't it? We've got three bottles of new wine. Beautiful baking. I can't imagine your trailer is like uh, Michael's trailer. List. Um, cognac, whiskey, <laughs> wine. <laughs> well, we did an engineering last week from school. Oh, yes. the only Jeez. Yeah, yes. the only department that has a drinking its middle name. <laughs> so we did a big gin tasting trip. How did you manage to um, connect school with the gin tasting? Yeah. In gin airing. Oh, Staff only. Like yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. I leave that. So this one is ro with the rose. So it's got rose water. Yeah. One of them. Malt or clear vinegar. None. And well, compared to Taranaki Foodies with Area 41. We are Olina Williams, Michael Self, and Margaret Christiansen from Meringue Magic, and um, Rose from Vintage Linen and Collectibles. Hello, everyone, again. So while you've been listening to this wonderful song by Al Stewart, we uh, have been trying meringues with some wine. Uh, um, wine was uh, very kindly donated by Michael himself, himself, himself. <laughs> <laughs> and meringue was from Meringue Magic. So we have two uh, tasters today in the studio, three, three, and they're going to give a real, honest opinion and review on Margaret's food. How, who wants to start? Nathan Griffith, he's the social media manager and the leader of the food reviewers group. <clears throat> meringues are a lot of fun to eat it's almost like we have to eat but meringues are almost like entertainment in, in the form of birds so like all, of, all these different textures you know i can taste some puff rice in there that's the that's the flavor that's permeating these um meringues is the puff rice and it's full of interesting consistencies too I just love it. Awesome, thank you. Thank this you. was nice. And how about our youngest team member, very talented artist, Oli Foy? Uh, yeah, like Nathan said, meringues are fun. <laughs> um, that's just really nice textures, like a bit of chewy and like really puffy and at the same time as well. And of course, the old fella comes in and tries them. And I'm one of those people that justify overeating a meringues because basically they're a glorified omelette without <laughs> that bulky stuff in them. But a right. beautiful <laughs> bit of egg. This one, I was looking for that flavour because often vinegar is used in them, but you, you use something else in there. Um, what's the magic of uh, these ones? Because it's got that slightly pinky caramelized um, color of um, that went more when you use malt vinegar rather than, than white vinegar in a meringue. Well, there's no, no vinegar at all. No, oh, oh, yeah, all it is, <laughs> it is egg white, cast sugar, rose water, and a little touch of pink. Color. Oh wow! That's, Which is really it's interesting just, because yeah. you don't. It's not over sweet. No, that, it's that's not. one of the that, that rose water and, and straight rose wine is good. But mm. one of the great things, of course, when you eat meringues, you can indulge in a few of the so-called sticky wines, and we're having Gee. a lovely Gewurztraminer with uh, with these mm. um, Sunday fun. afternoon on the lawn meringues cream. Um, it doesn't matter if you're outside, it all goes goes over your front, you just brush yourself down <laughs> or lick each other off. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a plan. But why is it Sunday afternoon? It could be every day afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, meringue, a lot of people can't get hit around meringue, but this um, uh, product, similar product, exists, exists in many cultures. So uh, we have a um, 
we have a dessert similar to this one in Eastern Europe. It's called bizet, and it's very crunchy inside. It's supposed to be crunchy inside and outside. So it's slightly different texture. It's more kind of a brittle. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I actually prefer the French one. It always gives me a wonderful memories when my family went to Paris and um, we lived right in, in, the, in the middle of it, not, not, uh, like a, a quarter away from Louvre. And at the bottom of our entrance was a bakery and they sold meringues. And the meringues were like 30 centimeters in diameter. Yes. <laughs> and uh, they had so many different flavors. They were very chewy inside. So your meringue is kind of like following this French tradition. Um, so some of them have a like a slightly nut, nutty flavor. It was like a wool of something in it. Some of them have different colors. Um, uh, so do you produce any other colors? Not at, oh, moment. Flavors. Yeah. No, not at the moment, but I am going to start experimenting. I've just been a little busy. <laughs> oh, wow. You just opened only yes. a few weeks ago. We, are, yes. we have the owners to host you just after the opening your business. That's yes, yeah, only six weeks, so it's going pretty good. So I am looking at different flavours. Mm -hmm. And I bought a book by Genevieve Knights, and it's her Pavlova book. Mm -hmm. And it's got amazing stuff in it. And there's also some made with saffron. Mm. And I'm really keen to try those because they look beautiful for a start. And she says the flavour is amazing, just so different. And I don't use saffron very often. No, there's a lovely in... grower of saffron and mocow. Right. Yes, so right. just as somebody to wow. yes. look up. Yeah. We need to invite them to our show, yes. right? But I'm sitting here listening. Meringues, Olena in Paris at the, near the Louvre. Real <laughs> bohemian. I bet you drank red wine and, and, and spouted poetry at little tables as well, did you? It's basically international house in the studio today. We, we meet so many cultures, Scottish, French, um, I don't know, Old English and yeah, Eastern European. It's pretty amazing how yeah. you can unite it all. So um, how big is your production? How big is my production? I basically only make about four dozen a day. Okay. Um, but so is it like on subscription or is it just by order? How just, by, order? just by order. So if they want to find you, how, what, how can they do it? On my Facebook page at, at mm -hmm. the moment, um, I probably need a social media manager <laughs> so, <laughs> i can recommend you someone very keen who can, can partly paid by the products <laughs> <laughs> um yes and i do if i have a little overflow then i pop them on marketplace and i sell a few on marketplace as well so uh, i discovered you meringues because you donated some to new plymouth volunteering oh, yes. mary wonderful mary yes you kind of connected us so kudos for new plymouth volunteering please uh, visit them and uh, kind of they're doing great things in the community yes, yeah so you donated them just because you made a little bit more right yes. Oh, this is so awesome. So um, what sort of people normally buy meringues? Because we have so many different other lollies and um, macarons. Well, <laughs> it's, it's a bit difficult to, to put a, mm -hmm. to pinpoint exactly who it is. Got, I have young um, nieces and nephews who absolutely love them. Oh, right. And, um, well, children always like sweet things yes. because it, yes. it has a high, um, like a content of uh, protein. It's probably um, yeah. uh, maybe less bad as, as, as some other products. So it's protein. Yeah. Uh, rich. But I, I, I have a fairly good big following of older people as well because you know, nostalgia back 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 nostalgia. Well, I think one of the keys of these ones that we've tasted is that they've got that crunch and chewy in the middle. Mm -hmm. A lot of other commercial meringues or little pads are very soft. Yes. Although those terrible things that are made out of reconstituted K-Bock. <laughs> it tastes and, like chalk. Yes, yeah. and then you just yeah. munch them up again and yeah. then rebake them off. Yes. But the, these are a real key, that, that, that little bit of crunch. But the secret, you've got them beautifully even, I think, uh, one is getting the mix right, yes. but the, and the right times in the oven, you know, the high, then turn it down, yes. just as you've got that caramelization happening. But 
as you have got them all there beautifully even in size that's my biggest struggle i always keep piling bits are you piping or spooning no just spooning it's all wow. spooning. i don't i'm not good at piping <laughs> <laughs> but well, I, that's a perfect shape. Yeah. i would yes. never actually guess to be honest yeah. and so i'm loving a total artisan bench top from go to woe yes. with the old gray mixer <laughs> and uh, um and the non-gray mixed person mixing yes thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so what um uh, so producing meringues involve a lot of yolks and you do everything from scratch what do, uh, what do you do uh, whites egg whites what do you do with yolks at the moment i freeze my egg yolks mm. and just use them for pies and um omelets and things like that but um, so if any listener has got a really good recipe Okay. Even a cake recipe. I believe there is one for, with egg yolks only. Yes. I would love it. Thank you. Shout out for those foodies who listen. If you want um, to either, either purchase or maybe collaborate um, about yolks, extra yolks that Margaret has, please contact her and maybe we will have another interesting story to tell yes. from the radio. Making free ends with almond flour. Yes. Uh, very much. Many egg yolk. Right, okay. Yeah, this, so, this is yeah. the 10th idea of, your, of a business for you, Michael. If you want <laughs> to <laughs> my problem in my past as a baker, I was always the taster. Yeah. And, and that is my downfall with meringues, <laughs> is that half of my mix gets eaten before it gets onto the tray. Do you ever suffer from that? Occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> what is the best drink to have with meringues? I actually like a rosé, actually, with my, with the ones that I like. Yes, I like, I like good one. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about rosé, I look at the uh, business card of Rose, which is vintage linens and collectibles, and it has a beautiful design with a rose, kind of like a ribbon and things like that. So, Rose, what do you sell in this vintage thing? I sell pretty much anything old. Wow. <laughs> so oh, 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 mainly, <laughs> mainly, mainly linen. Um, I'm really getting into beautiful glassware at the moment. Um, yes. European glassware. Is it fashionable now? So what is it? Yeah, anything old. Enamelware, kitchenware. Is there one of those mixes that uh, Margaret uses? Maybe I should buy one. I haven't found one yet. <laughs> Probably more was more than it, uh, than it was uh, like 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. But look, vintage and retro are very, very in, aren't they? Yeah, yes. Yeah. yes. So, yeah, so. Where, where is your shop situated? I work from home. You work from home. Yeah. So if people want to buy something, they need to pay you a visit and... Uh, yeah, or just go online to trade me. I, my name is Aroha Nui Vintage. Aroha Nui Vintage. Yeah. Do, you have, do you have social... Uh, Media, like yes, I've got an Instagram page, it's the same name. No, I love I'm those girls, they like Rose, and they have Instagram pages. Wow. <laughs> yes. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> 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 okay, no so. doubt they like pink gin as well. Now, with the linen, you know, that is an amazing product, isn't it? Now, over the years, it stood the pace of time. There's nothing like proper linen sheets or um, linen clothing to wear next to, to you. And are you finding that people are looking for new linen as well? Is anybody making found, it? I haven't found any. Mm. Um, but mine are mainly beautiful old tablecloths. Yeah. And nicely embroidered and, you know, crochet. And hang beautifully. Absolutely. Yes. So if, if I uh, decide to have a photo shoot with the food because I, I do write uh, about food and sometimes I need a photo, I'll come and borrow. Can I borrow some? Of Absolutely. <laughs> I'll Absolutely. give you a shout out because I'm really good at shouting out about people. I'll be pleased to help. <laughs> awesome. I think it's a perfect time to listen to our third song, which is Fields of France by Al Stewart. Okay. Wow, it's going well. This is the end of the show. Basically, I'll have a short wrap up after that. And if you want to say something 
And just before I wrap up, you're most welcome. Any news you want to share? Or you well, what about your visit to China this year? Oh, my visit to the old people. I made rings with the oldies at Chalmers. Oh. So is it like a cooking class? Well, no. We had to make sure. It's a reminiscing thing. It's about remembering. Oh, right. It's not about teaching. It's about remembering. Because one of the oldies said, oh, do you think, do you think we need teaching? <laughs> <laughs> and Claire, their coordinator, said, no, no, this is about reminiscing, remembering what you did when you were children and what you, how your mothers made plans yeah. and stuff like that. I love, I love this idea. idea. I love this idea. It's sort of a, a, a freaking classes. It's a nostalgic session yes. rather than... Yeah. yeah, and it was. And it was actually was really amazing because I expected maybe half a dozen people. And I looked at them and the room is chock full of people. Oh, I think and we, should, like, we should talk about it definitely after the break. There was a lovely lady and she was 102, but she was right up the front and she was right into it. Oh, Chalmers. Is, is it where your grandma is? That's right, yes. Oh, yeah. yes. yes. Her name's Corrie. Oh, yeah. I call her Omit. She's from Holland. Oh, yes, yep. Mm -hmm. so I go there regularly to sing. You do? Yeah. 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 Now, I know there's two wings, so I don't know yeah. if they always mix the wings. Oh, okay. Is it a, is it a, oh, okay. They bring them from all over. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 They talk. I... I made a batch of meringues first at home and had those ready because I figured that the process was going to be a bit long for mm -hmm. So I did that and then I took the ingredients and he set me up in front of and, and we mixed them up and got them ready and took them out to the kitchen for the cook to cook. Oh, wow. And so while we were doing that, then the, the girls, had a chance to eat. Yes, yes, yeah, so they all ate one mm -hmm. and um, and then they took some up to the hospital wings as well mm. because there were a lot of people out there that, that can't get it. This is wonderful because a lot of people um, have memories through the smell. They do, yes, yeah. yes. And different yeah. ways of making them. They made it so different. Welcome back to the studio of Taranaki Foodies with Area 41. It is us, Olina Williams, Michael, Self and our wonderful guests. Margaret Christensen from Meringue Magic and Rose Palmer from Vintage Linens and Collectibles. So we're coming to the end of our program and um, I would like uh, Margaret to share this wonderful story about Chalmers, Chalmers? Chalmers Rest Home. Rest Home. Okay, tell us, what, what did you do with them recently? Um, I went there, they do a program called Reminiscing and it's basically cooking and you know, making different food. And Claire rang me up, their coordinator rang me up and said, Mark, would you come do something with us? So I said, well, my first go would be my meringues. And so I figured that the program was going to be a bit long for the old people. And because and it's for an hour, about an hour and 10 minutes. And so I made some at home. I made a good batch at home. And while I was making the meringues in front of the old people, um, the, girl, the staff took the meringues around to the, uh, the residents and gave them a bit of a taste. And it was lovely. It really was. It and is. there was so many. Because people. the ultimate place, as they will remember, to yes. make a meringue is in a cold range. The end of it, the night, put it in, exactly and then you pull them out for breakfast in the morning. Oh, oh that's for breakfast. Was, yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> There was one lady there that said that's exactly what her mother used to do. She popped in the cold range and said, Best of ever. That's it. Yeah, it was amazing. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for coming. Oh, thank you for having us. <laughs> so, uh, this was Margaret Christiansen from Meringue Magic and Rose Palmer from Vintage Linens and Collectibles. And it was um, Karnaki Pujis with Area 41. Um, just a few words from our sponsor, Area 41 on Broome Street, the perfect place to get away coffee, meals, meetings and events. Area 41 is an Italian restaurant, cap and bar, with a passion for traditional Italian meals with a twist. They offer a variety of breakfast, pizzas, pastas, risottos, Italian mains and decadent desserts. They don't have a meringue there though. <laughs> as well as set menus and platters for any occasion. Open for breakfast, lunch and dinner, seven days a week. 
All their meals can also be ordered as takeaways. Thank you for listening to Taranaki Foodies with Area 41. Now we are going to take some selfies and post them on Instagram and Facebook. Tune in to 100.4 FM every Saturday at 4 p.m. Remember, there is a live recording on the, of this interview online on Taranaki Foodies with Area 41 group page on Facebook. Meet you next Saturday at 4 p.m. on Airwaves. Bye-bye, my group materials. Bye-bye, everyone. Yeah, we'll see you next time around. <laughs>